Hi, it's Christy and welcome back. Today we are going to make stuffed peppers in the crock pot. Another really easy recipe. Um, here I have, I think it's a pound and three quarters of ground beef. I believe it's 80-20, but it really doesn't matter. Um, prior to this, I had made some minute rice. You'll see in a second. And I had added some hot sauce to the, to the rice to give it a little bit more flavoring. Joe and I both like spicy uh, food. Not that this is tremendously spicy. The, the hot sauce adds more flavor than anything. Um, so I put about a cup of rice in with this ground beef, ground beef dirt, um, and some salt, maybe about a teaspoon. And then, of course, some freshly ground black pepper. Again, we like it a little bit spicy, so I give it quite a few turns. I apologize if you hear my cat. She likes to talk, and she's in the room with me. Here is some garlic powder. About maybe a half of a teaspoon goes in. Um, I don't use the garlic salt because the hot sauce seems to give me enough flavor with the salt that I already added. So just sprinkle that in. And of course, make sure that your hands are clean and your rings are off your fingers because um, you're going to get in here eventually. I believe I tried to start with a spoon and be ladylike, but it's not me, so it didn't last long. Um, and then, of course, more hot sauce. I take the cap off because I don't have time for the dribble. About a quarter of a, t of a cup there. And of course you can go a little heavier um, or a little lighter depending on your preference. But so try to incorporate the beef and the seasonings and the rice and then get your man claws in and mix it all together. Um, just because the rice is going to help to keep the beef from getting like a brick inside your pepper going to keep it nice and moist and a little bit more fork friendly when it cooks so there you have it nice little mixture and then of course you're going to go and wash your hands make sure you get under your nails ladies because things get trapped in there and that would be gross to feed someone there we go you can hear my cat playing with my husband right now i apologize and then alert so anyway i have really big peppers here uh, just got three of them because again it's just me and joe um and we'll pack up extras for either leftovers tomorrow night for dinner or pack for lunch the next day we actually ended up just splitting one of these peppers for dinner because um, they were just huge so Red bell, bell peppers, you don't have to worry so much about the heat with the ribs and the seeds. I just get them out, pop the little heads off the uh, peppers, and then get all the the seeds and rib out that I can, but I don't go crazy over it. Um, it's not going to create, you know, a higher temperature for you. They're bell peppers. They're nothing special. And I only use red bell peppers. The green ones give me reflux. Um, and then someone had told me that you shouldn't eat green peppers anyway. I don't know how true it is. I think my dad told me, right? That they're, they're not ripe. That's why they're green. I don't know if it's true, but I follow his, his little notion there. And it does seem to be better with me for my heartburn. So anyway, take the peppers and then stuff them. And don't be afraid to, like, feel like you're overstuffing them. Because when they cook, the meat shrinks and even if you have a little initially over the top of the pepper, um, when it cooks down, it's going to be level, if not a little bit under the pepper, the, the rim of the pepper. So if you end up stuffing all your peppers and you still have meat left over, I usually just roll them into balls and throw it in the uh, crock pot as well because sometimes people don't like pepper. I don't understand because they come out nice and sweet, but everyone has a preference so it's an option if, if it happens just you know don't waste your your ingredients there so as you can see I stuffed them pretty pretty firm don't try going in with a spoon and, and being a lady and putting them in nice because you're never gonna you're never gonna get done you're gonna be messing with that for a while 
Um, so again, wash your hands after you play with the meat. And then I grab my crock pot. Oh, no, I don't. I grab my tomato soup. Uh, yeah, so these are family size cans of tomato soup. And I use two of them because, again, we like a lot of sauce or gravy um, anytime there's one to be included. So I empty both of them out. Here's the first one. And you're definitely going to add more to this because it is really thick. And if you were just to put this in the crock pot, you know, just with the peppers and add a can or two of soup without any kind of fluid with it, it's going to be really thick and it's going to burn really easily. So make sure that you, um, well, like I do, I just take a can and fill it up with more water and then mix it in. Uh, with the rest of the tomato soup. I don't think it's necessary to do two cans. I don't think you have to do equal parts because you do want it to have some thickness about it and it will get even thinner as it cooks because the meat is going to release um, its fat, its juices as well. So there you go. Spoon's not a good idea. You might want to go for a whisk with this. Of course, a little bit of hot sauce or as my husband says a little bit more <laughs> and a little bit more so probably another quarter of a cup into the sauce there and then I become semi intelligent and grab the whisk and get try to get most of the lumps out again it's all gonna mix up in the crock pot anyway but um, you don't want any clumps really to, to kind of coagulate the bottom there we go. And she's cleaning up. And I really just mopped my floor and then got pissed that I saw that um, seed probably went on the floor there. In fact, they did. All right, so there's my crock pot. Again, it's the large capacity. I'm not sure how many quarts. A little bit of olive oil, and I wipe it down with a paper towel just to, to coat the whole bottom and the sides because I have an aversion to the sprays, the non-stick stick sprays seem to leave a film after a while for me um and that's a pet peeve so I, I can't use it anymore and then the peppers go in you can try to stand them up but again we only had three so it really wasn't they weren't going to hold themselves up um and they were large and some people cut the bottoms but i think you're just losing the meat if you do that so why bother and then just pour the salt over the peppers make sure you coat them really well as they cook, and I'll show you later, when they cook and they're starting to get done, the peppers become buoyant almost in the sauce. Would you call it buoyant, Joe? They kind of bounce. That's how I know that they're cooking well. So anyway, over to the crock pot. We're going to put the lid on. And then setting for high for about, what did I do, five hours? And it was probably done in about four and a half there you go. And then let it go. So the first couple of hours, I kind of ignore it. I go about my day doing whatever I need to do. Um, and you can, you know, obviously smell it cooking. But make sure that you give it at least a stir. And then you'll see that the peppers are now at the stage where I consider them buoyant. That's the only way I can express it. Is they're, they're on their sides. They bounce back when you push them down. And they're pretty close to being done. I like my peppers to be soft. I think once they get soft, they get really, really sweet. Um, and the sweetness of the peppers and then the spiciness of the hot sauce really kind of combine and complement themselves or each other rather. And we might be a little bit different because we serve our, hot, <laughs> our stuffed peppers with mashed potatoes. It's just a little preference that we have. Um, but you can see there's the finished product. And mashed potatoes and, of course, some sauce over it because no meal would be good without it. If you like this, remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and then, you know, leave me a comment. Thanks so much.